Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. Hello, hello, testing, 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 testing. Okay, cool. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. What I'm gonna talk about today, I'm gonna to talk a bit about a neurotransmitter that is produced. Actually, 80% of this neurotransmitter is produced in the gut and only 20% of this neurotransmitter is produced in the brain. And this particular neurotransmitter, what's involved in, is involved in your mood, your memory, your sleep, and believe it or not, your cognition. And if you're deficient in this neurotransmitter, it's really gonna affect your system. So what is this neurotransmitter? This neurotransmitter is serotonin. I'm gonna talk about serotonin deficiency. Okay, so serotonin deficiency. What is it? Where is it made? It's made from, it starts off as an amino acid. Okay, so L-tryptophan, we ingest the amino acid either with our diet or we do it by supplements. Now, in order to get converted to 5-HTP, we need iron present. So the conversion, first off, you need iron to convert tryptophan to 5-HTP. Now, there's a situation if you're anemic. So if you're anemic, you're getting insufficient amounts of iron. So right here off the bat, there's gonna be a low conversion rate. Then 5-HTP gets converted with, from, with a bunch of B vitamins. This is your B6, your B12, folate, and magnesium. That gets converted from 5-HTP to serotonin. Okay, so again, if there's a situation, if you're anemic or if you have insufficient methyl donors, if you have the genetic factor um, MTHFR, again, this is where you're going to have a situation converting 5-HTP to serotonin. Then serotonin gets converted to melatonin, and, mel and it's, melatonin is actually stored in the pineal gland. The pineal gland is a small gland within the brain that actually gets activated when, uh, when it gets dark outside, okay, at dusk. It's stored in the pineal gland. Actually, the majority of it is actually produced in the raphe nuclei, which then gets shunted over to the pineal gland. So it's stored in the pineal gland. It's activated at nighttime. But also, too, we need the neurotrans. Again, we need the catecholamine, norepinephrine, and also we do need more B vitamins for the conversion of serotonin to melatonin. Now, again, if you're anemic, if you have the gen genetic factor of the 5-HT, I'm sorry, 5-H, I'm sorry, 5-THFR genetic factor, that again, the conversion from serotonin to melatonin is going to be hindered. So, again, 20% is produced in the brain, and it's involved in mood, memory, sleep, and cognition. 80% is produced in the periphery. Basically, what happens is it's the gut. So if you have poor gut function, if you have malabsorption syndrome, or if you're on the standard American diet, you are not going to be producing enough serotonin which is going to affect your sleep. So a lot of people who, a lot of my patients who have poor sleeping patterns, it's due to the fact they're not producing enough because they have a bad gut. Now again, serotonin is a very important neurotransmitter because it's needed in the prefrontal cortex. We talk about serotonin and I made another video about dopamine. Those two are hand in hand. Dopamine is more for like the motivation, serotonin is more inhibitory. So what would cause a deficiency in serotonin production? One, it could be low iron. Now again, if you're anemic, if you're not absorbing the B vitamins due to the MTHFR genetic factor, sure, you're not going to produce enough serotonin. Next, low stomach acid. Now if you have ba a bad stomach, low stomach acid, malabsorption syndrome, okay, what's happened is that we need enough sufficient stomach acid to break down proteins because proteins are first broken down in the gut, in the stomach. They're absorbed. <clears throat> So if you're not producing enough stomach acid, you're not absorbing the B, the B vitamins. Now, the B vitamins are essential for the conversion of 5-HTP to serotonin, serotonin to melatonin. Also, if you have the MTHFR genetic factor, you're not absorbing, you cannot absorb and break down the folate predominantly and also to your B12. So this is where a supplement, you need to take like methyl, um, methylfolate or methylcobalamin, which is already broken down B vitamins in your system to produce more serotonin. In addition to low blood sugar, again, if you have fluctuations of blood sugar, you're attacking the adrenal system. If you have low adrenal function, 
again, with too much cortisol being released, it's going to fluctuate blood sugar and insulin levels. Now, the most important situation with that is because L-tryptophan, in order to cross the blood-brain barrier, it needs a level amount of insulin to cross that blood-brain barrier. Again, this is step one. So if that's being affected, you're not converting the tryptophan to 5-HTP. Now, if you do have low serotonin deficiency, what can be done about it? This is what I recommend for my patients. One, increase your B vitamins. Now, as just as a safety precaution, you take the B vitamins, but I always recommend taking the methyl, basically taking the methyl folate, methylcobalamin. That means that those B vitamins are already broken down. So we're gonna start the process already from the get-go. Two, increase your proteins. Increasing your lead proteins because tryptophan is an amino acid, and amino, what is amino acids? Amino acids are the basic building blocks of proteins. So if you increase your proteins, you're getting sufficient amount of tryptophan. Next, supplementation. Now, with my patients, I start off, I always recommend, let's start off at the beginning. Let's start off with supplementing you with about 500 milligrams of L-tryptophan, about a half an hour before bed because the tryptophan will be converted to the 5-HTP, the 5-HTP will be converted to the serotonin, and serotonin will be converted to melatonin. Now, if, you, if it's not going to work because something's wrong with the blood-brain barrier, if it's not crossing the blood-brain barrier, then this is where I move them over to supplementing them with 5-HTP because we're avoiding this situation here. Also, too, if you're anemic, okay it's going to it's not going to work so one of the things I, ha I need to address is to uh, if you're anemic build up the iron build up the iron first <clears throat> also do exercise okay exercise very important because exercise does a dynamic amount of pro uh, benefits one it releases endorphins it stabilizes the blood sugar it makes those the the receptors more insulin sensitive it makes you less insulin resistance also, too, it stabilizes the adrenals, okay? So exercise is a must. And also, too, last but not least, reduce your stress. When you reduce your stress, you're bringing up the adrenal function. You're stabilizing the, the system. The body doesn't really work when it's, when it's full of stress. It actually reduces the peripheral functions and just focuses on the main functions, okay, if you have high levels of stress. One caveat that I really don't recommend to my patients taking is melatonin as a supplement. If you take melatonin as a supplement, what's happening, because melatonin is a hormone, it's going to mess up our own circadian rhythm. Now, it, for example, if, you just, if you've traveled a couple weeks at a distance, it, I, we live in Chicagoland, so if, I always tell my patients that if you went to Hawaii for two weeks, your circadian rhythm is messed up. So yeah, take melatonin for about a week or so to get that back in check again. However, after one week of, of, of use of melatonin, stop it because you don't want to ruin your own circadian rhythm and production of melatonin by taking the supplement, okay? So again, serotonin deficiency, if this sounds like you, definitely we could help. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.